Adobe makes me angry, so it's time I do something about it. It seems like everyone across YouTube hates Adobe, Adobe they are just the worst. and yet ends up relying on their software anyway. I'm not here to rehash the LTT Pantone video. The point is that Adobe software is pretty much necessary to get into this industry now if you're just starting out. There's a reason my college pays for me to have an Adobe license, and it's not because they love the price, it's because you just have to. And so it seems like I'm allowing a dangerous thing to happen if I just stick with Adobe. Because the longer I stay on this one piece of software, which I am fairly fluent with now, the harder it's going to be to switch away when I'm older. Why bother going to Vegas when you're already a Premiere Pro? And the fact that I have a legit license makes things worse for me than if I'd pirated it. I have to have Adobe's background stuff always running, and I can't downgrade the software if they do something I don't like. And switching away is made even more awkward because there's less of a clear benefit from it. Yes, from a principal standpoint, I hate how Adobe licenses things. But am I ever without an internet connection when I'm on a computer? No, not really. But I don't want to keep supporting Adobe. Whether it be through me adding to the statistics of people who use Adobe software, or when I move out of school, me having to pay them like £80 a month. So what exactly am I going to do about it? There are two possible acts I could follow. Behind door number one, I follow my open source ideals. That's Blender, Kdenlive, Olive. And behind door number two is proprietary software. So Resolve, Final Cut, Vegas. Or if I want to rephrase that, behind door number one is the world where I atone for my proprietary software sins and move to the woods in sync with all that is free. And behind door number two is me, because I need things to actually work. Jokes aside, in all honesty, I did want to go open source, and I gave it a try. I edited my Oculus DevKit 1 Connect video on it. It's just that on Linux and Windows, everything had huge performance issues. That video I ended up finishing in Olive, which is in Alpha, because it was still more stable than Caden Live. And Caden Live does have a lot of nice features, but I couldn't even watch my videos back at 360p. It's, it wasn't usable, and that meant I got frustrated. I spent about twice as long as I normally would editing a video of that length, and I was unhappy with it because cutting things was really hard when I would sometimes get runaway footage. I, I would press the spacebar and it would keep on going for a bit. The end product was so bad that after I rendered the video and got to see what it properly looked like, I went back and added a disclaimer to it to tell people that, no, you don't need to leave a comment, I understand this is edited bad. And that's a shame, because I hate to talk bad about community-made software. And it's not like it's their fault. Caden Live does have a lot of tools, and Olive is progressing really nicely, but it just doesn't work. So let's give Resolve a fair shake. Installation was quick and easy, and it didn't give me a bloody launcher or a bunch of background services or annoying activation since I'm on the free one. And I'm quite a fan of from what I've first seen. It was fairly quick to grasp how important media works, and although I'm not entirely used to the resolve etiquette, like I hate the existence of the cut page, that that is how I normally do videos. I do a rough cut, and then I will polish things after, but I don't like the limitations that places on me. But it's so much better than Adobe's alternative of having a bunch of different pieces of software. They can claim all they want that Dynamic Link is amazing, but what's more amazing is just having one piece of software. There are still a few things that remind me of the redundancies of Adobe software, which, by the way, no amount of good editing can fix the fact that I decided to record in front of a light source. But anyway, f for example, I needed to blur some footage because I left my travel card out on my bed. And I knew that I could do that in Fusion, but I didn't know how to track that. So I went and looked it up and found out that I can blur things both in Fusion and in the Color tab. And I thought that tracking would make more sense in the Fusion tab, and it might be there, but now the way I've learned it involves doing it in the Color tab. And something similar happened with text. I still cannot quite grasp node-based compositing when it comes to moving things around and how Fusion handles its own timelines and stuff. It's weird. but. What I do know is that I wanted to add some text, and I knew I could do that in Fusion, but moving it around was really weird, and so I looked up some tutorials for that, and found out that text is, is actually just an effect, which isn't what I think of when I think effect. I think of something that changes the clip that it's on, but actually in Resolve, an effect can actually mean another extra layer in the timeline. 
None of those things are deal breakers, and I will be able to learn my way through them, but they are similarly weird to some of the stuff Adobe does. But besides that, things have been really nice. Not that there aren't still weird things, I'm not a big fan of how delete actually ripple deletes and backspace actually deletes the clip you're on, so I guess this was made by Mac people. But in all fairness, that is quite useful once you get used to it. However, there are still quite a lot of times where I'm pressing the delete button and having the rest of my footage ruined by some clip sliding in and destroying it. Waveforms on clips actually change height when you change the volume, Adobe. And also, the project has a little preview so you can scrub through it in case you're like me and call everything Untitled Project 1. And even though I'm on the free version, the only big thing that I think I'm gonna keep running into while being stuck on the free version is the render times. There's no other way to put it other than that they are slow as balls, because it uses your CPU rather than your GPU to render videos, which means that an 18 minute 4K video took 22 minutes to render. But they could have just been Adobe. They could have just said, <laughs> you want a free one? <laughs> what? So they do lock away some other things like their AI based stuff and noise reduction but I can make do without. I would prefer it to be faster, but in my eyes, it is fair enough that if you are a pro, they need some way to differentiate this for the pros versus the people like me. So yeah, if you're a pro who has deadlines to meet, then you need things to render faster. Work has probably bought you a beefy GPU and you wanna actually use it, you'll buy the pro version and $300 is very fair for that. But if you're me, you might like it to be faster, but the truth is nobody other than myself is breathing down my neck to get things done faster. But then, if I'm leaving anything on the table, even if it's just render speed, why am I bothering at all? I said myself earlier in this video that, yeah, I don't like it, but it does work. And I'm gonna have to relearn a bunch of things that just, you know, I, I just understand now. I, I feel like I can speak Premiere. I'm no Terran Van Hemet, but I can get my way through it, and there are some simple things in Resolve that I just don't get yet. And that's just because Adobe is the worst of the software industry right now. They're proprietary, which Resolve also is, but they're a subscription model where you cannot own your software. Where if they do something, and they have done things like this top unremovable bar in Premiere Pro, or the extra steps it takes to export to Media Encoder in Premiere Pro, all of those things, if they do that, I'm coming with them. Even if I don't want to upgrade my software, I must. And I feel like they're as close to a monopoly as you can get without being one. It's not like Avid or DaVinci or Vegas don't exist, it's just that, especially in the YouTube scene, it's mainly Premiere. And I realise that because I'm more a, a, a video man, then I've been focusing a lot on Premiere, but similar things go to Photoshop as well. Like, you expect someone to use GIMP? You could. Will you? And despite no money coming out of my bank account directly, like I explained before, it would eventually, and even right now, it is being paid for. Am I not the customer? What if these things are not best for me? Why do I get no say in this? So yeah, there's gonna be a learning curve. But also, get out of my background services, get out of my file explorer, sod off Adobe, please. Resolve is not perfect. Blackmagic is not perfect. Look at their B-Raw integration in Premiere. But they are better, and I'm happy to say that I am switching to Resolve. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Let me know in the comments if you have any grievances or good things with Adobe or Blackmagic for that matter. And let me know if you think this was the right move. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Bye. Subscribe if you want to.